Hey, welcome back. Uh, yeah, so we're moving along on the GT40. Today we're gonna get the uh, engine built and in the chassis, we're gonna get the uh, interior tub partially assembled and in the chassis and the front suspension into the chassis pan. So essentially we're gonna have everything but the body panels and the wheels mounted to the car when we're finished. So let's uh, jump into the spray booth and we'll get going. Okay, so first we started out with uh, Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. Uh, yeah, just uh, simple operations with primer. You just kind of coat it and let it dry. So nothing too major here. Uh, there was a lot of parts, so it took me a long time to do. Uh, yeah, just one of those things. You guys know how it is when you're doing a model. You kind of, anything you can kind of paint at the same time you do, right? So... This was all the metallic pieces that I did. So yeah, um, just priming them up and getting them ready for their respected colors. One thing I'm beginning to notice with uh, Mr. Servicer 1500, especially the black, it covers very well. You don't need very much to cover apart. Um, I use very little primer for this. In fact, I, I even thin it down quite heavily to get even more out of it. Uh, I do a 70% thinner, 30% primer mix, and it works well for me. I've never had any problems. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, a lot of work to do here, but we'll get through it, guys. I've also been experimenting with a 60-40 mix of primer to thinner and I find 40% uh, primer and 60% thinner covers quite a bit better. The problem with it is you don't, or the problem I have with it is I don't get to use as much of it. Like it doesn't last as long. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah. So, uh, you know, just be prepared for that. It's a 40 mil jar that you can thin down pretty heavily so I mean you can stretch that out quite a ways I've already done two or three kits and I still have like half a jar left so I'm pretty happy with it I really took my time here um I wanted to make sure I got every angle and covered every crevice I guess you could say on the parts I wanted everything covered with primer so that way especially the black primer so that way when the metallics hit it it really makes it pop so um, the rims I took real special care with and a lot of the engine pieces um, this is probably one of the reasons why this took so long so uh, yeah uh, thanks for bearing with us we're almost through the primer guys we're on the home stretch here Well, as you can't see in this frame, um, I'm out of shot here, but uh, I'm taking extra care with the rims to making sure I get everything. Uh, I wanted to make sure they all had a metallic coat on them and a nice primer coat. So uh, I took a lot of care uh, with the rims especially.
Okay, so now uh, I'm starting off doing my chrome parts with uh, Mr. Color Super Metallic 2, Super Chrome Silver 2, SM206. Um, I love this chrome paint. I find for the price, it's probably one of the better chrome paints out there. I mean, Alclad is obviously probably the top, but I would say this is a close second if you're looking for something that's a little bit cheaper. This is definitely the way to go. Um, I've been using it for almost a year now, and I haven't looked back. I probably don't see, I don't I honestly don't see myself using another chrome paint. Um, it's just too easy to use. It goes on, it dries quickly, it dries to a nice hard finish as well, so it's not hard, it's not easy to damage. Um, it withstands masking. So yeah, overall, it's a, it's a good chrome to use. Okay, so in the manual they call for a one-to-one -one mix of silver and gold. So I used um, SM202, Mr. Color Super Metallic 2, Super Gold 2, and SM201, Mr. Color Super Metallic 2, Super Fine Silver 2. Uh, I found the paints went on great. They have a nice shine to them. There's like a silverish gold tinge to it. It's a really nice looking paint when you mix it together. Uh, yeah, I'm a real big fan of the Mr. Color stuff. Now we are doing our brakes and suspension pieces with uh, LP19 gunmetal. Um, yeah, uh, it's also some transmission pieces there. Uh, like I've been saying with the Tamiya paints, you just kind of work your way, work them up. You don't really like soak them on. You take a light coat at first, let it gas off and dry for a few minutes. Then you come back over it, hit it again, and hit it again until you're satisfied with, with the finish that you've achieved. Now we are priming our interior. Um, I'm doing the silver accents first on the interior. I wanted to try something different to see what kind of effect I could get with it. So anyway, I'm doing the silver first, so that's why I'm doing the black primer. Uh, yeah, uh, it, the Mr. Hobby stuff, it's, <laughs> it's a pretty easy, user-friendly paint, I would say. For the uh, silver accents, I used LP11. Um, I didn't want to do a chrome silver because I felt like it was just too much. Uh, also, the, the interior, I ended up painting a little bit too shade. Of, like the shade of dark blue I used for the interior is too dark. What I should have used was pure blue from Tamiya. But, um, yeah, I had I some, some reason it said dark blue in the manual. And I figured, okay, I got to mix black and pure blue. So yeah, it is what it is. Now we get to jump down to the bench and uh, start assembling the interior. Um, yeah, uh, this piece w went in, re it was real snug. It took uh, quite an effort to get it through the hole. Um, a lot of the pieces on this model fit extremely snug. Uh, I would even say like, a lot of them didn't even need glue. I just put it there for safety and my own peace of mind, I guess you could say. Uh, now I'm putting in the brake pedals and gas pedals. Uh, again, real snug fit. Everything went real smooth with it. Uh, now we are putting in the uh, fire extinguisher. Um, not a big deal, but it would have been nice for a label on the fire extinguisher just for detail. But, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's still a great kit. I would, I'm glad I bought it. I mean, I have, I've had a great time building it thus far. 
So now we are going to start the suspension. So these springs, they kind of snap into place. Um, you get the top peg into, into place and then on the bottom there's like a groove into the spring and it'll just kind of snap in and then you hit it with the glue and to keep it there. Now for the other spring, um, same as before, it kind of just snaps in and then you hit it with your glue and uh, Bob's your uncle. So uh, now we have the last piece of the suspension, um, snaps into place. I didn't put any glue on mine. I didn't feel the need to. I don't feel like I'm going to be playing with the steering too much. So it can stay as it is and even still it doesn't provide you a great range of motion with the wheels they don't they only turn maybe 10 20 degrees uh not a great but would have been nice to have more of a realistic sort of thing with the turn with the uh with the wheels so now we're fitting our inner wheel strut uh wheel structure um it went in real easy Takes a little bit of fiddling, but it kind of just snaps into place when you get it right. Uh, yeah, I I messed around a little bit with it, but over time I eventually got the hang of it and figured out what I was doing. The tolerances on this kit are super tight. Um, getting this piece this part in was very frustrating. Uh, I struggled for quite a bit with it before I actually did get it in. Like I said, they kind of just snap into place, but I mean, it's just getting it in the right position to to get it to snap in is was the problem for me, but I got it eventually. Here I'm uh, getting glue on the parts where the uh, rad goes, so I'm just kind of putting them in place and, and uh, getting ready to slide the rod in place. This is another tight fitting part that doesn't really need glue. If you don't really want to glue it, I wouldn't say you had to. Um, I mean, not many people are going to touch that part once it's inside the model. But uh, like I said, I'm anal and I glued it anyway on the top and bottom just to make sure that it was stuck. Here we're installing the uh, rear suspension. Uh, it's also like an engine uh, mount, mounting point. Um, yeah, I had a little problem getting the engine to mount on top of it. It took a little while to get the little groove to fit the tongue into, I guess you could say, but I got it in. It just took a while. But uh, yeah, the engine was interesting on how it was assembled. Uh, the manifold goes on after you get the block in the car, which was interesting for me. Uh, I wish I would have maybe done the exhaust like the way they instructed in the manual instead of the way I choose to do it in in this video but overall it worked okay so here we're putting the uh, rear shocks into place here I'm just gluing up uh, those rear shocks making sure they're where they're supposed to go um, it's kind of a weird area to get the glue into. You got to kind of finagle your way in there, but I eventually got it. Now for the rear brace. Um, this is a fiddly part. Uh, it's thin, so I was worried about breaking it. So I was trying to be extra careful while I was putting it in. But uh, once you get it in place, it kind of just pushes down in the back and runs on an angle. So it worked out really well for me. Now for the torsion bars, um, they went in pretty good. Uh, one side snaps in, the other side you have to glue. So, yeah, it went pretty well. Now I'm just taking the tweezers and putting the other side in place and hitting it with the glue whilst not trying to knock it off of its mounting point. So that was fun. <laughs> but we got it eventually. Um, I keep saying that for some reason. Uh, anyhow, this model, it, it, it's a great model to build. Like, I have nothing but good things to say about it. Everything fits super tight, though. Like, you got to really put some effort into pushing some of these pieces in place. Like, um, these pieces here, they slide into like a little, 
like a fork almost and it goes around it anyway it took some it took some fiddling to get that this part in place but like i said before i eventually got it <laughs> Okay, so now I'm just assembling the uh, barrel, the exhaust, excuse me. Uh, yeah, uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, I made it all one piece, like I said, but I should have done it like they did in the instructions. I just wasn't paying attention when I was assembling it. I guess that's why they tell you to read the instructions first. <laughs> so yeah, um, now we're going to do the rear brake. Uh, these just snap into place. There's no real need to glue them. Uh, they're pretty firm once you snap them in. Uh, they fit through the hole that's in the transmission. And then there's two points where the ho they hook in. You'll see me snap it in at the end here. Alright, so that's it. We got the... Uh chassis pan i guess we can call it uh completely wrapped up so next is just uh fitting stuff onto the body and uh windows tires uh decaling the tires I'm trying to think is there anything else to do on that car no i don't think there is so at this point i gotta say uh the kit builds up pretty nice it everything fits really snug like, I would say most of the pieces you wouldn't even really need to glue unless you're anal about stuff like that, which I am, so I glued them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everything fits nicely. It's almost, like, the, the kit is very well engineered, let's put it that way. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you haven't liked or subscribed, please do. Um, I appreciate any comments left on the video, any uh criticism uh constructive or otherwise uh take it easy on me please anyways everyone have a good one we'll see you next time